Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna do my best to narrate uh, this whole process. The first image was the actual charger and now we're looking at the supplies that I ordered for this project uh, and the location within my garage next to my 200 amp panel where the Tesla Mono uh, wall charger will be mounted. Uh, here's a look at the inside of the panel and the wall setup where I'm gonna be placing it. And kind of, you know, what I'm looking at. So a 60 amp uh, double pole breaker will give you approximately, um, what, let me back up here. <laughs> this is the largest breaker you could use with the Tesla wall charger, at least the, the generation um, three charger. Uh, it charges at a maximum of 48 amps, which I think on the Model Y gives you 42 miles per kilo per hour or something of charging time. So um, for a 60 amp breaker, uh, drawing this type of current into the charger. Uh, from what I've read, you can get away with a 6.3 wire or a 6AWG wire, but uh, the recommendation is to use a, um, a four, a number four wire, which is uh, substantially thicker and more difficult to deal with than um, a six gauge wire. So I picked up um, the N, NMB, NMB, which is um, got the Romex sleeve on it. Um, it comes with a red, a black, a white, and a bare copper ground. Um, so that's initially what I bought. I bought four feet of it, um, and I bought the breaker, and I bought the charger. And then uh, when I started to dissect this project, uh, a couple things come into play when you get into this larger wire. Now, a six wire will fit on your neutral ground bar, I think, without any issues. Um, but once you get into a number four wire, let me show you what you have to go with here. You have to get um, this, this larger lug set or screw. I don't know what the heck they're called here. Neutral terminal kit. Uh, basically, this has a set screw that goes, feeds in through the center of this into the neutral bar, attaches to the bar. And then there's another uh, tightening screw that goes through the top of this block and holds down the larger wire to the neutral block or the grounding bar um, of your panel. This is a um, Eaton brand panel. It's a 200 amp service. Uh, it's a fairly new home. Um, this home is less than a year old. Um, so I have finished walls in the garage and, uh, so, uh, I talked to a couple electrician friends and they told me, um, that they never drill through the stud in a recessed panel through a stud and run your connector through the side through a stud this way, which I thought was weird, but I take their word for it. They're electricians and I'm not probably going to get killed in the comments for that particular comment. Um, but basically they said we always go up or down to pull our runs, especially with that size wire. So I said, oh, fine, I'll do that. Well, because this is a bigger wire, requires a one inch um, connector, which I have right there. So uh, I have a bigger connector, it's a one inch connector, and that's the, actually the maximum size conduit you could use for the Tesla charger is a one inch. Um, I couldn't find a connector that would not have to have your hand on the back side of it to tighten a set screw on the connector underneath the panel. So if I did go through the sidewall, the issue would be is how the heck do I connect the connector to the back side of the panel if I have a stud blocking that. So, um, so it just made sense that I would have to do this, which is cut into the wall. Um, the other option would be to come in through a knockout and then come out of the wall and run a, a external conduit into the charger on the exterior portion of the wall, um, which with this gauge wire, I think I would be able to get away with a one inch uh, PVC conduit. Um, the issue with that is, is that I also read, even though it's not a code violation from what I've read, that you're not supposed to run this NMB or this ro insulated Romex inside a conduit. I couldn't figure out if you could actually strip this off and then run these wires through the conduit, which I think you can, but um, I'm not sure if that would be an issue. But regardless, this is rated to be in the wall. Um, 
and um, not in conduit. So I already bought the wire, so I was kind of committed to putting it in the wall and figuring out how to do that. So all I had to do is drill one stud bay right here. I had to move two wires out of the way. Um, one of them I think is for the air conditioner condenser. The other one is for either the dryer or the stove. I'm not sure which one it is. I'd have to chase the wire up to find out which one of these it is. Um, but basically this is how far I got. So I, I came through the panel, a one inch knockout with a connector, came through, drilled the stud, came into the next stud bay, came up the wall, used a one inch spade bit, um, drilled a hole just adjacent to the left side of this stud. I used the, um, the template, let me show you the template. Uh, Tesla has this template that you can put on the wall and it shows you basically where your mounting screws go. So I offset to the left side and use this screw hole in the top one up here. Um, can't, I'm holding the camera here. Uh, but I used the top right and the bottom right to mount the screws, ran the wire inside the Tesla charger, and now I'm working my way backwards and now I'm into the panel. And let me tell you, Stripping the sheathing off of this cable is a complete pain in the ass. And um, and I know, you know, people are like, oh, you can use, you know, you can use a knife to cut it and all that shit. And um, I've been using, you know, a utility knife, which, you know, you got to be careful, right? Because if you, if you cut too deep, you cut into the sheathing of this cable, it's junk. Yeah, you can't use the cable. So, um, and that stuff is super thick. The sheathing is super thick. And it was a long process of just scoring it and scoring it very lightly enough that I could peel it back, peel back the, the, uh, the casing on it and get it to the, the wires that were inside. So that's a process, especially the thicker wire. So it's a lot easier when you're dealing with a 12 wire or a 14 um, for your typical outlets. These are easy to strip. And um, actually, I've done panels before and I've done outlets. And, you know, this thing is a godsend. I mean, I've Stripping wires with this is fantastic. Um, highly recommend you get one of these if um, it has, tells you exactly where what size wire it strips. And uh, but that works fantastic. Um, and you're going to need something substantial to cut this wire. Um, so you're going to need a, a pretty heavy duty pair of wire cutters. So to get through that wire, <laughs> and then stripping it use a utility knife on the edge. Strip about half inch of the uh, sheathing off of this exposing the uh the copper and then you're able to insert it into the breaker um so that's kind of as far as i got so i have the sheetrock piece that i took out right here which i'm going to plug back in place here uh, and eventually refinish the wall tape it mud it paint it and make it look like new now um i don't think i'm going to finish the wall um right away i'm just i'm going to put the sheetrock back on but i'm not going to mud it and tape it and paint it and all that because um, we're putting in a pool and um, we're gonna have to get back into this wall to run um, an external sub panel, which is gonna be down this wall outside on the back corner of our house. So they're gonna have to probably come through here or here down and then out the external, um, the exterior portion of the wall. <clears throat> and then from there run I think I'm going to be at like one and a quarter because I think it's a number two wire I need for 100 amp service. Uh, and I'm going to run conduit on the outside of the house to uh, the pool pad where the filter and all that stuff, the pool equipment will be on. Um, and I actually have the panel right up there. It's a 125 amp outdoor main lug eaten panel. I think it's got six breaker spots on that. So I can, we're going to do an outdoor pavilion. So we'll be able to run a couple outlets and some lights within that and uh, like a little tiny outdoor kitchen area. Um, so I'm just going to put this sheetrock back on here, screw it onto the wall so it's not exposed. And then I'm going to obviously button this up tomorrow. Um, I'll get back on this for now. Um, just going to leave it as is and uh, maybe just uh, put the panel back on and leave these wires hanging out the bottom because I just want to make this safe. Um, so that's, that's as far as I got. So this took me, um, about an hour or two just to get into the wall and figure this out. Uh, but now that I'm in it, I think I'm in a good, good spot. And, uh, this is, uh, about 48 inches off the ground, which I think they recommend minimum height of 45, maximum height of 60. So I think it's a good height. And in terms of my garage, I'll show you, it's kind of in the middle. 
so typically I back my car in. Um, I don't have a Tesla yet. Um, I ordered one, so I wanted to have this on the wall before I get it. Uh, but eventually, um, I'll probably back in. I'll be on this side of the garage, and my wife's car will be on the other side, and I'll be able to charge uh, it's on the driver's side back corner. So I'll be able to charge there. And if I'm pulling, um, I have the 18-foot cable. It'll reach this back corner here if I'm parked on this side of the garage. So I got the longer cable so I could reach, regardless if I pull in or back in, I'll be able to reach with that cord. Uh, they have an eight foot option and an 18 foot cord. Um, I think even in this position, I measured it, I could probably park my car outside and plug it in right there and still be able to reach no problem whatsoever. So I think it's in a good spot. I know a lot of people put it at the very back corner and run conduit <coughs> or they put it back here and they run it to the back corner of the car this way. But I think in the middle is good. I didn't want to have a lot of wires hanging. I didn't want conduit all over the walls. This is a finished space, so um, I wanted it to look somewhat finished being on the wall without conduit, so I think it's going to be a good option. So uh, that's it. That's where I'm at. That's a quick video. Um, I'll put some pictures right after this video of the finished product and what it looks like, and I'll let you know how it charges when I get the car. So stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a ton of Tesla videos. So... For those of you who weren't wondering, I ordered a Tesla Y, um, white with the um, induction rims. And uh, I ordered uh, a couple weeks ago and the uh, expected delivery date has been fluctuating from October, then it went to November, and now it's currently sitting at December. So uh, it's gonna be a while before I get the car. So, uh, But this will be nice when I do get it. I'll be able to pull in and charge right away. I won't have to worry about going to superchargers and all that stuff. Even though there is one close to me, I'm in Knoxville, and uh, there's one very close that I could use, but I don't really want to have to deal with that every day. So uh, I'll catch you on the next video, and stay tuned for a bunch of Model Y videos that I'm going to be doing, and we'll go from there. And uh, I'm rocking a Subaru right now, Crosstrek, but uh, we're going to be getting rid of this bad boy, and uh, I'm going to be selling this and getting into a Tesla. So I'll catch you on the next video. Later. So here's the finished product folks uh, looking at the panel on the wall. Uh, I put the drywall piece back patched up the hole Gonna leave it temporarily there uh, To be finished later on after we install our pool in the summer and uh, It's just the wall opened up see what it looks like from uh, the installation process uh, It was a pretty easy project it took me probably two hours to do it um, Wasn't that long it was more research uh, figuring out uh, the supplies that I needed and everything to make this project work. I just used a spade bit right there to drill into the wall, marked my uh, drill spots or position for the screws with the template that was provided, used a uh, wire connector right there, that metal connector, and then um, I positioned the wire through the stud bay, and then I bought wall connectors, or um, I'm not sure what the, the electrician term for it is, but basically... Uh, there's my daughter helping out, but the, the wire needs to be secured to the wall uh, within six inches of the panel or the, the junction into a box uh, or six or 12 inches. Um, I try to get it as close as possible. So I went out and bought one inch um, brackets that hold the wire to the stud base. This is a look before I actually did the wiring. Um, so it's a little bit in reverse order here, but just to show you kind of what it looks like and uh, what my thought process was, I had to move the the insulation around a little bit and there's just kind of the rough pull through the stud and into the panel and through the sheetrock just to see what it looks like there had to move those wires to make my way into the panel wasn't a big deal again here's me testing turned on the charger you see I have a green indicator light that shows that the charger is active and running properly and then I did connect to Wi-Fi checked it there were no updates that were needed uh, when you first turn it on, it's going to give you all of the bars lit green if you have full power to the panel, I mean to the connector, the charger, excuse me. Um, and what that indicates is that it's charging at the fastest rate possible, which is 48 amps. Here is the picture of the two connectors that I used to hold it to the stud bay. Uh, again, so the wire doesn't move around in the, in the stud cavity after you close it in. That is the extra ground wire that was included in the pairing of the Romex wire. I just capped it, rolled it up and zip tied it to uh, the inside of the panel so that way if I ever need to use it for anything, doubt I'll ever need it, but I just left it in the panel. It's not going to do any harm and I'm just going to leave that hanging on the wall.